Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Chris Hong and I'm an artist and I make art related YouTube videos. And in today's video, you're going to see me paint a watercolor portrait of my little kitty boy. I am not gonna say his name because he responds very well to his name. Oscar! <laughs> and he is sleeping right now and I don't want to disturb him. I'll spell it out. It's O-S-C-A-R, like the grouch. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to share this with you because it's been a little while since I have done a watercolor portrait on my channel. I've been doing more and more watercolor portraits recently, partly in preparation for my upcoming portrait art book. Yes, you heard that right. If you missed it over on Instagram, I'm happy to officially announce here on YouTube that I'm publishing a portrait art book. It's titled Portrait Companion, a gallery and guide for stylized portraits. This book is part of a gallery featuring 200 of my favorite portrait drawings and paintings all the way back to 2017 to 2024. And the guide section features three in-depth portrait process walkthroughs along with 12 pages of step-by-step -step images from start to finish. I'm so excited. This is my second art book after Tumble and this time it's all about my portraits. Portrait Companion will be up for pre-orders on my website on Thursday, July 25th at noon Eastern Standard Time and there will be early bird discounts and exclusive bundles so don't forget to mark your calendars. I actually just finished putting the book file together a few days ago. After working on this project for the last two months or so, I've sent the file to the printer and I'm currently waiting on receiving proofs in the mail. So if you want to stay up to date, make sure to follow me on my Instagram where I'll be sharing the progress on the book's production as it's being made. This book is a labor of love and so I hope you're as excited as I am and hope that you can show it some love when it launches next Thursday. So picking back up from where we left off, I've been doing more and more of these watercolor portraits lately and it has been quite a long time since I've talked about my watercolor portrait process. I think the last time was maybe as long as three years ago, if not more. So for today's video, I thought it'd be really interesting to talk about uh, using watercolors and how I've been approaching it a little bit differently now as opposed to years past and some of the revelations I've had uh, recently. The entire painting footage for this portrait is I believe just over two hours or a little bit longer, um, which is actually quite short for me. Uh, often with my illustrations, I take a lot longer than that, um, hours upon hours. So for me, this is considered to be a pretty quick painting and so um, I just edited out a lot of the pauses and uh, I was able to maintain a bulk of the um, painting footage as well, uh, keep it in real time so you can really see kind of how the painting comes together from start to finish. This portrait is actually one of three pieces I did for a group gallery show for a gallery called A Bend Gallery in Denver, Colorado. The show has since ended, but I believe these pieces are still available for sale on their website if you were curious to look them up. Up until this point, I've never made artwork of my cat. O-S-C-A-R, which yes, is a travesty. So when I was invited to participate in this group show featuring animals, I seized the opportunity. My cat is a Russian blue and Russian blues typically have very angular faces with ears that point outward to form almost an equilateral triangle shaped head. So I really wanted to emphasize that for this portrait. I used a fairly limited palette grabbing mostly a cobalt turquoise, some kind of quinacridone pink. I'm actually not sure what it is. I just have it on a palette that I was given. Um, and Prussian Green by Daniel Smith that I like using quite a bit. So I guess the first thing I will point out uh, is that I have been using cold press paper as opposed to hot press paper. and Back in the day, I prefer to paint these watercolor portraits on hot press paper because uh, I didn't really love the look of the texture, but for some reason I've really embraced cold press paper. I think I 
initially started reaching for them because I actually saw that Little Thunder, who is an amazing artist over on Instagram, uh, she uses cold press paper pretty exclusively, I believe. So I decided to try using cold press again. And I will say that I do think cold press paper is a bit more forgiving than the hot press paper. I feel like hot press is a little bit more delicate and because of the slick smooth surface, um, sometimes the pool of paint kind of travels and dries in an unpredictable way. Whereas the cold press paper, I feel like because it's got those little grooves in the paper, um, the water, disperses in a more even way i don't know if, if it's just like a me thing but i do feel like cold press paper is a bit more forgiving and going back to the texture i realized that when i paint bigger um the texture doesn't bother me as much because the faces are bigger and so the little uh, texture like grains are not quite as pronounced and big on the face so that leads me to my next point is that i have been painting these portraits much bigger i typically used to paint watercolor portraits in my strathmore mixed media sketchbook and i would typically do like four portraits on one page and the sketchbook is eight and a half by eleven so usually these portraits are maybe like two by three or three by four inches. And now I'm painting on papers that I cut to size, about six by nine inches. So it is much bigger. And something that I realized about painting bigger is that it actually feels easier. Um, I thought, you know, bigger must be harder to cover the area, but actually I am finding that uh, now that I'm painting bigger, Weirdly enough, I am waiting around uh, less for the areas of the picture to dry. Um, Cause when I was painting smaller, I felt like I was having to wait quite a bit for my layers to dry. But once I started painting bigger, I felt that, oh, um, I can work on the hair while this part down here on the face is drying. I feel like it, made things flow a little bit better because I was not stopping every time I was waiting for the paper to dry. I felt like I could kind of keep a better flow in my process. So yeah, painting bigger, uh, I could kind of work in one area at a time. And while I'm waiting for that area to dry, then I would jump over to a different area in the picture. So yeah, I mean, it doesn't seem that revolutionary. Uh, but to me, it kind of surprised me how much of a difference it made to just paint bigger. By the way, here is the star of the show, my main man, my little kitty boy, inspecting a package from Pretty Litter, who is sponsoring this portion of the video. Pretty Litter is a non-clumping silica gel based litter and what makes Pretty Litter really unique from the rest is that the litter changes color to help monitor your cat's health. It changes color based on the pH level of your cat's urine, as you can see on the info card here. The white silica gel crystals make it easy to see the changes in the color, helping to detect early signs of potential illness, including urinary tract infections and kidney issues. The litter itself is super easy to maintain by scooping out the solids and stirring the crystals to reset daily. I actually first heard about Pretty Litter from a friend who uses it for her cats and hearing her vouch for it made me curious about using it, especially for the health monitoring feature. While Oscar is a healthy, happy boy turning four years old next month, I heard urinary tract issues with male cats especially is often easy to miss. So using Pretty Litter to monitor any changes in his urine is one way for me to keep tabs on his health for peace of mind. It's also been great for my small apartment since it doesn't have a strong perfumey smell that takes up the whole space. And I love how it delivers straight to my door in a light and compact box, making it really easy to handle and store. So if you're interested in trying Pretty Litter for your feline friend, go to prettylitter.com slash chrishong and use code chrishong for 20% off on your first order and you get a free cat toy as well. Link will be down below in the description box. Thanks once again to Pretty Litter for sponsoring this portion of the video. 
possibly the biggest kind of shift in how I approach my watercolor portraits now versus before is uh, now I am really trying to prioritize the uh, play of shapes and colors on the portrait as opposed to the lighting and the modeling of the forms. Um, ultimately, I really want, I want a watercolor portrait of mine to have both, both uh, like a beautiful play of interesting shapes and colors, but also feel very three-dimensional on the page and have a like a strong sense of lighting and it really feels like it's part of an atmosphere as if the portrait is sitting inside a three-dimensional space. So I think back in the day, I would try to establish the lighting first, make sure that the portrait reads 3D and work out the rendering of the features and everything. But now I'm realizing when I do that, uh, I lose my colors because too many layers of colors will end up with funny colors. And so I've been trying to prioritize now uh, my colors kind of first and foremost, as well as my shapes. So what that means is I go in with the watercolors with the intention that I will likely not disturb these layers um, too much after. <laughs> I'm trying to go in a bit more confidently and I'm trying to draw and design the shapes that I think will remain till the end. And also once I have the colors kind of mapped out in the portrait, I am trying my best to not go over these colors uh, with different colors and end up mixing them up. And when I do go over them again, I'll try to go over those areas with like colors or similar colors. So the colors become a little bit more intensified. So for example, I deliberately made the cheek areas and the ears uh, more like pink and purple. And I intentionally relegate the pinks to those areas. And I try not to use the pink anywhere else in the picture or like, use it everywhere in the picture because then everything will just mix together and you won't get those like distinct areas of pink. I'm tr really trying to be mindful, even though watercolor is layerable, uh, of not going over my layers too much. And when I do uh, lay paint down, trying to be patient and allow it to sit for a little bit and allow the edges to form and gauge later how I feel about it. Maybe I don't need to go in and soften it out. Maybe I like the natural kind of blooming of the edges. See how the colors feel. Maybe don't feel like I have to corral it uh, one way or the other right away. Just like allow the paint to sit for a little bit, allow um, the watercolor to kind of do its thing. Um, and yeah, just practicing patience once again. I think I'm also just learning to control my watercolor better as I go. I mean, that makes sense as these things usually just do come with practice. Um, but I think I used to try to do too much while the paper is wet. And I think I also put the pressure on myself to create very like watercolory kind of washes. I think I really just have a better grasp now of uh, when to paint and when not to paint and when to do certain things and when not to do certain things. So for example, with hard edges, uh, the paper has to be dry. Otherwise the edges aren't going to be as crisp and it's not going to be as controlled. Um, I'm just learning how to control uh, the watercolor techniques a little bit better um, and it's been fun or at least I'm facing less frustration than before. So back to talking about this portrait, something that I've been really trying to lean into lately is abstraction. Um, instead of trying to convey something literally or too realistically, 
Um, and one of the reason why is because sometimes I just genuinely don't really know what that area is supposed to look like. I don't really have a great understanding of it. Um, one example is the ears um, here on this portrait. Um, Kat's ears are, I feel like, deceptively hard. <laughs> They look like they could just be triangles. I think Kat's ears are actually very dimensional. Um, they're kind of more like satellite dishes and it's really difficult to paint that. At least for me, I find it to be a very interesting challenge to paint uh, cat ears. Um, and while I don't understand it, I just try to make do with the shapes that I'm making and, and with the values by how I distribute the values um, to really give it the look that it curves in and curves back into space. Um, and it's not just like a flat two-dimensional triangle shape on the head. I hope that makes sense. Um, but yeah. In, because I don't quite understand it, because I don't quite uh, know how to convey it, uh, I just kind of rely on my design skills and my skills of abstraction and just focus on creating an interesting and appealing play of uh, colors and shapes um, instead. I think in saying that, I. I feel like I could have done a little better job. I do think they end up looking a little bit flat in the end, maybe especially on the left side, but I do like how it, it looks on the right side. And here we have a little interruption from the star himself. I don't recall exactly what was happening in this moment, but it's quite likely that he had been kind of sitting on my arm as I was painting, but uh, was out of the frame of the camera. And I just wanted to kind of hold him up to the camera so you guys can see what kind of conditions I am dealing with when I paint. Um, my little boy, he is extremely affectionate and very attention hungry <laughs> and because i work from home uh, sometimes it's a little challenging because he is constantly trying to climb me essentially and ask for hugs and i have become accustomed to holding him with my left arm uh, while drawing or painting because he will try to climb me incessantly. I will try putting him down over and over again, but he just is a relentless little boy. I kid you not, he will attempt maybe 20, 30 times throughout the day because he just loves being hugged and held like a little baby. Um, and while I love it so, so much, it's also, you know, challenging to work with. But yeah, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. Uh, I really wish he was more of a lab kitty, um, but he is more of a shoulder cat, I will say. Uh, shoulder and chest. He just loves to sit. He just loves to sit as close to my face as possible. Um, if he could fuse with my shoulder, he probably would. Yeah, he's a sweet boy. I don't know about you guys, but I personally really love using a flat brush when it comes to watercolors. And I think I used flat brushes back in the day as well. I don't think that has changed, but I've been really enjoying using it. Um, I kind of feel like when I use it, the way I use it, it feels like I'm taking a, like a sculpting tool and kind of 
pushing the like clay or whatever and sculpting with it. That's really kind of how it feels like to me using a flat brush. Uh, it's just like a really great way to put down a broad just application of paint. And I like the subtle kind of texture you get with it. As I overlap my strokes, you can see like faint kind of lines um, in the overlap. And also within the brush hairs itself, it just kind of leaves like a faint stroke i feel like maybe i'm imagining it but i just feel like it creates an interesting kind of texture that is distinctly different from using a round brush a round brush is my go-to like workhorse brush but i also just love using the flat brush in conjunction and the flat brush definitely makes me approach creating shapes and applying my paint differently than using a round brush so i uh, I really just love using both, um, and and I definitely talk about this in my book, um, in one of the process walkthroughs. But yeah, I would definitely recommend it if you've never tried. I again, I mentioned this in the book, but I actually do love using the flat brush instead of the round brush when I want to create like really uh, crisp edges, um, because with a round brush. I don't find my um, like stroke very reliable. I am very shaky and my pressure is kind of variable. So I feel like the line that I get from using a, a round brush is not as straight or crisp as when I use the flat brush, the edge of the flat brush, and I just kind of dab along uh, whatever line I wanna make with it, whatever edge. When I do that, I find I get much more crisp lines and edges. So yeah, I find that I opt more for the flat brush when I wanna make these kinds of um, hard and crisp edges. Uh, for example, on the ears and just like along the silhouette of the head. So yeah, big, big fan of the flat brush. I feel like having two brushes and switching between them is good to help keep you kind of on your toes and help inspire new ways to problem solve your picture. But speaking of my like shaky hand and me not being able to draw lines very easily, uh, I will say the whiskers were hard for me because they are curved lines. If they were straight lines, I feel like it would have been easier to take the flat brush. Um, but in, with the whiskers, they are curved and I find drawing curved lines in watercolor really difficult. Um, and I think here I went I think I went a little bit ham and drew them a little bit too long and maybe I should have used a smaller brush because they are a little bit prominent but um but yeah it is what it is um I used like different colors for the whiskers because I thought it was a nice play on all the colors that I used in the rest of the piece and yeah with the whiskers I felt like the piece felt pretty finished So I think that is all that I wanted to kind of touch on for this portrait and for the video. I am curious to see how these uh, revelations of mine change my approach when it comes to my watercolor illustrations because I do approach my portraits and illustrations a bit differently. It's also been a while since I've done a watercolor based illustration. So I'll have to try that out and report back my findings. So I think that is it for today's video. Again, my book Portrait Companion will be available for pre-orders on my website on Thursday, July 25th at noon Eastern Standard Time. You can follow me on Instagram for any news and updates regarding the pre-orders. 
Don't forget to check out Pretty Litter through the link below in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching. Let me know if you like this video by giving it a thumbs up and I'll see you in my next one.